Over the last couple of weeks and maybe even months, we've seen more and more talk sort of percolating to the surface about a cheaper variant of the upcoming Galaxy Z Fold 6. Now, we have seen some vague rumors about prices. We're not going to dig too deeply into that in this video, although one rumor says maybe less than $1,000 for a Z Fold 6 that doesn't have an S Pen digitizer, maybe has some other downgrades like the processor, perhaps this S version of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 that we've heard about in this video though, what I really want to dig into is the question, is attacking the price the right approach for Samsung to be making? And to rephrase that question, what is the primary reason people who don't own a folding phone don't own a folding phone? Now, I'm sure lots of you probably have guesses about this. I had my own assumption about this as well, but I thought it would be fun to try and gather some data on this point. And I think that there's a few places we can kind of dig in and talk about some things here. The first thing I kind of want to show you guys is a post I made in my community tab all the way back like nine months ago. This was before the Pixel Fold had been released and there were some rumors that it might end up being cheaper than the $17.99 price point that it eventually was released at. And I wanted to know from you guys how much of a difference would that potentially make? So what I asked here is, just to keep it kind of broad, if you've already decided you're buying a Fold 5, you're buying a Pixel Fold, how much of a price discrepancy would matter to you? And I went $100, $200, $300, and then I'm locked in, the price would not change my mind. And this result was pretty interesting to me. Because $100 or $200 wasn't going to move people very far at all. If you're looking at $1,800 for a folding phone, a different folding phone that was $200 cheaper, you are probably going to stick with the one that you were preferring. $300 cheaper, though, and a lot of you said, okay, I might have to jump ship now. But even more people than that said, I know what I'm after. I know what I want. That price doesn't really matter to me. I'm buying the one that I'm buying. But this is interesting but this is only talking about people that have already decided to buy. So we gotta ask another question. We gotta ask of the people who haven't bought, why not? What's holding you back? So I asked that. If you haven't bought a foldable, why not? And with almost 800 votes at this point, this is uh, what we have as a result. And as you can see, price is far and away the number one reason that people say they have not bought a foldable phone. Durability though, 33%, it's not that far behind it, right? It's still pretty close. It really is a two horse race. People don't care about specs. They don't care about the weight or the bulk. They don't care about the software. They care about the price. And then they care a bit about that durability as well. And honestly, I don't think this was a super surprising result, right? We just saw the OnePlus Open come out and make a ton of waves, and a lot of that was because they were cheaper than the other two competitors. They managed to produce a product that was in the same general tier as these others, in some ways better than what was already on the market, in some ways perhaps a little bit worse. The software definitely has some rough edges, but they got that price down, right? They undercut them by like a few hundred dollars, and that made a huge difference. There's a little bit more that we need to say about this, though, because I don't think it's just as simple as saying if you get the price into a more comfortable place, that 51% of these people voting will now opt into buying one of these devices because it's possible for people to be concerned about multiple things. It's possible that a lot of these people were like, price is my biggest concern. Get the price out of the way in. I'm still concerned about durability, and that durability might still prevent me from buying one of these devices. And there's also this weird inverse correlation I've noticed in the comments where people are worried that a cheaper Z Fold 6 might also not be as durable. It might actually go the wrong direction in regard to durability. Now, personally, I don't think that there's any good reason we should be assuming that's going to happen. These folding devices are being iterated on, and the thing that is going to break on the most frequently, it's the screen, it's the folding screen, of course. It's that part right there down the middle where the crease is and the folding glass, the UTG, is getting improved upon 
generation after generation, and the hinge itself, the technology around that hinge, and the way with which the screen is bent and folded is being improved upon. And when we're looking at a cheaper version, there's no reason to assume yet that they would use an older version of UTG, right? They might get rid of the pin digitizer, but I don't know that that's going to make it more likely to break. But like I said, people see cheaper and they assume worse. And when they're concerned about durability, that's the first place that their mind is going to naturally go. And I get that. So these folding foam manufacturers have sort of a weirdly steep hill to climb with these devices. We believe pretty strongly that Samsung is about to release a phone that's going to take care of, for a lot of people, that price problem. It's not going to be a $500 like budget phone, but of course it's not going to be. But if they can get that thing to anywhere near that $1,000 mark, suddenly they're right there with what people are used to paying for flagships instead of being $1,800. But even still, I bet a lot of people will now just revert to that durability concern. So they've got to get that messaging cleared up. There is this perception that folding phones break really, really easily. And I kind of want to turn your attention to this article from March 14th, 2024, Phone Arena. Were you one of the 78 million Americans who broke their phones in 2023? I saw this headline. And I thought 78 million Americans broke their phone last year. That is an absolutely mind-boggling number. And let's scroll down and get some more context. Now, this data is apparently coming from all state protection plans. 2023, 78 million Americans damaged their phones. And if we come down here, 31 out of every 100 American smartphone owner damaged their phone. One third of you guys with phones damaged your phone? And 67% of those were damaged screens. That is, to me, maybe you're not surprised by this at all. And the more I've thought about it, the, like the less surprised I am. But just seeing those raw numbers, I was blown away. One third of Americans broke their phones, 67% of those being broken screens. What am I getting at here? People break their phones all the time. They're constantly breaking their phones. And what makes this even harder for Samsung is that we're talking about a relatively new form of technology for which there is already this negative perception of fragility. It's extremely expensive and people just think it's very, very fragile, even though I don't think that there's great data to kind of back this up. We have several things working against us here. So there's that negative confirmation bias I talk about all the time. People go into the Galaxy Z Fold subreddit and they're going to see lots of posts about broken Z Folds that help reinforce this idea that they just randomly break all the time. People don't go into these reddits and post about how their phone is two years old and everything's fine, nothing bad has happened. You tend to only hear from those people who have had bad things occur. And even when you try to run polls like I did here about the Z Fold, have you had any hardware issues? I believe you end up with an inflated negative response because people with no problems might be less likely to even vote in a poll. They see this and they just scroll past it. But the people who had an $1,800 phone that broke, it's in their head. They remember it. Maybe they're still mad about it and they want to voice that opinion about it. They want to let people know that this happened to them, which I totally understand. I posted this and people kind of got freaked out and they said, wow, that's 32% of people here said that there was some hardware issue with their phone. Ironically, that's 1% off from what we just said Allstate reported. So maybe that is the actual correct raw number. Maybe that's right. But if that is right, y'all, that's right there with the number of just all phones. That puts the Z Fold breaking rate at a normal rate. And yet that perception is going to persist. When the new iPhone comes out and somebody drops it and shatters it, you don't see front page headlines on you know websites like you do when a Z Fold comes out and there's a crack down the middle of it in a couple of days. You're going to see those posted much more frequently, much more sensationalized, and because of that, Samsung has a substantial uphill perception battle to wage. What are they meant to do? Well, all they can do 
is continue making the devices more durable, continue saying that they've been tested to 300,000 folds or whatever it might be, and then address the other thing, which they can address much more directly, and that the perception thing doesn't matter as much for, and that is the price. Get the price down, keep marketing that they're more durable and more durable and more durable, and hope that eventually, as the novelness, is that a right, is that a word, novelness? The novelty of these devices fades, so will the novelty of seeing them break, and then hopefully in the long run, they're in a decent spot. So guys, I've covered a lot of ground here. There's a lot to talk about, a lot of different little avenues to go down. If you see something I missed, or maybe you disagree with me, drop a comment down below and just tell me overall what you think about this subject. Is Samsung right to be targeting a cheaper Z Fold device? What should they do about the durability perception? Am I crazy for thinking it's more perception than it is reality? Again, let me know in those comments, guys. Subscribe for more content just like this. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.